and we can't really implement any public health policy if we don't actually know what's in our drugs. This is Bryce Coach. Not only is he a nurse and a healthcare professional, but he's one of the few lines of defense when it comes to Winnipeg's toxic drug supply. He's the executive director of Project Safe Audience. It's an organization that provides drug testing at events and concerts and also offers mobile testing around the city. The demand for testing is high and as the only organization offering the service in the city, they're struggling to keep up. So if we actually have this lab here, we can actually return samples to people and give a better result. The tests tell you if the drug you intended to buy is present, but not a breakdown of what else might be in it. As a result, users may be subjected to an ever-changing mix, which may now include drugs like fentanyl, which can be lethal even in small doses. With this fentanyl toxicity crisis that we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of uh, fentanyl in the drugs, and um, it's hard to sort of test that with, these, with this sort of technology. Really, the only results we can get for um, what drugs are in the supply is either from our reagents or from coroner's reports, which will come multiple months down the road, which is not great. So we kind of want to be a bit more faster moving than that. Coach did preliminary tests on a total of five samples for us, testing methamphetamine, cocaine, and morphine. Of the samples, three of the five came back normal in preliminary tests, but Coach often encourages users to pursue further testing, which can take drugs out of province. But testing can be difficult to access or come with a cost. When asked what it's like for people in a difficult socioeconomic situation when they try to access testing, his answer was simple. Very challenging. So they can get it sent off to a lab in BC, but that means you have to give up some of your drug to send off there. If we had a lab here in Winnipeg, we could actually test it in front of them and give them back their sample at the end of it. With these reagents, we actually destroy the sample while we're testing it. A large-scale public lab could also provide proactive drug alerts, where people who use drugs could be notified of a toxic batch via text before even coming across it. In Vancouver, long considered the leader in harm reduction in Canada, this service is delivered in real time, as are drug testing services and take-home fentanyl strips. Koch says we need something similar here. Um, people want to know what's in their drugs. People just aren't taking them willy-nilly. People want to want to know that they're they can be safer using their substances. So I think a drug testing lab in Winnipeg would definitely save lives. Drug testing is only part of the services a supervised consumption site would provide. Clients will also have the opportunity to have open and honest conversations with support staff about harm reduction and treatment. Coming up, we'll introduce you to another group serving as soldiers on the front line of Winnipeg's overdose crisis. As part of our series, A City in Crisis, we return to the front lines of the Winnipeg overdose emergency to find out what critical work is being done at the community level. The Winnipeg Bear Clan, now known across Canada for their community-focused work in Winnipeg, regularly works with people who use drugs, and its interim director says they too are seeing OD numbers increase. Uh, you know, I, I think that the drugs are getting stronger now, it seems. Uh, I think the combination is a little bit off, whatever it's they're being mixed with. I think it's a fentanyl. Um, heroin mixture. As a way to combat the overdose crisis, Walker says members of the Bear Clan are equipped with naloxone, but he says what's needed is timely access to treatment. Times we, you know, offer people a place to go and, and things like that, but if, you're, if you want to get off the drugs, you want to get off the drugs right away. You don't want to have to wait two weeks or three weeks or whatever the case may be. There should be no boundaries to, to get in for these people. That's but with issues like a lack of ID, transportation and location sometimes serving as barriers, he says help needs to meet people where they are and take a community-based approach. Uh, you know, we have a lot of great minds in our city and I'm sure that between everyone that we can come together and find a resolution for our problems. Walker says members of the provincial government should embed themselves with one of their patrols to see firsthand the need that's out there. I would like to see them come out and walk with us in, in any capacity and, and see the need that we see on a regular basis out there. And maybe that would be a catalyst to, to make them uh, look into it and get serious about changing the problem. The drugs that we send for further testing for the most part came back pure, but experts say that is becoming more and more rare as toxic supply continues to rise. They say now more than ever there's an urgent need for supervised consumption and better harm reduction in the city. In Winnipeg, Morgan Majeski, City News.